Jesus came. So the other disciples were telling him, we've seen the Lord. But he said to them, if I don't see the marks of the nails in his hands, put my finger in the marks of the nails and put my hand into his side, I will never believe. A week later, his disciples were indoors again, and Thomas was with them. Even though the doors were locked, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your fingers here and look at my hands. Reach out your hands. Reach out your hand and put it into my side. Don't be faithless, but believe. Thomas responded to him, my Lord and my God. Jesus said, because you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet believe. For a few moments, I want to speak from the subject. I just got some questions. I just got some questions. Father God, we thank you for your grace and your mercy have been faithful yet one more week. For Lord, we realize you keep looking beyond our fault and seeing our need for the opportunity to get it right. So now, Lord, we want to say thank you for being so gracious and so kind. So now, Lord, we ask that you touch our hearts and our minds. Help us, Father God, to not only be hearers of your word, but doers of your word also. That you might get the glory out of everywhere I'm putting and training from everybody that we encounter. That we may share the hope for the reason why we love you so much. And Lord, we be ever so careful to give you all praise, honor, and glory. It's in Jesus that we pray. And the saints of God say, Amen. 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 I just got some questions. Sometimes, while we're on this Christian journey, we find ourselves struggling with the fact of not having the answers to everything that we have just found out. That sometimes people make us feel bad for asking the questions that we have on our mind. That they look at us funny when we have doubts about what we read and what we heard from other people. That we suppose to sometimes just take it for face value that what you tell me is always the truth. That you would have the audacity to get upset when you tell me that the light is red and I ask you, how do you know it's red? Because you can say to me, watch this, can't you see it for yourself? Not realizing that some of us are colorblind. That when you see red, I may see burgundy. That when you see blue, I may see black. That when you see purple, I may see black myself. That just because we're looking at the same thing don't always mean we're getting the same revelation at the same time. Amen. That sometimes God takes his time to reveal to each one of us what he needs to reveal at the time we can receive it. Because oftentimes, watch this, and I like to use fool analogies, that I may like a chili dog. You may not like a chili dog because you don't like hot dogs. But until you get the revelation of taste of the chili dog, then you can only understand the excitement that I have when telling you, man, you need to try these chili dogs. Because all the times, watch this, our mind puts us in a particular situation that we can only appreciate that which we know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That because you don't know what I know, and I don't know what you know, when I'm trying to give you information, I can look at you strange because what the information I have tells me I need to go right when you're trying to tell me to go left. Amen. That I catch an attitude with your left turn because your left turn makes you look wrong even though we can go from both sides of trying to
trying to get to where we need to get to. Mm -hmm. And so we play our minds with people who think the same way we think, act the same way we act, live the same way we live, and everybody outside of that, we look at them as if they ain't got no business being around me. Mm -hmm. Case in point, our text this morning, uh, last week we talked about Mary and her indecisiveness, but this week I want to talk about Thomas and really get a little bit more of Thomas' story because Thomas' story is one of those stories that we talk about and we ridicule Thomas for having questions, but realistically we never considered the source. And I may not have too many friends after this, but realistically, friends, I want to say to you, thank you for tuning in. I appreciate you watching this five-minute lecture on I Just Got Some Questions. The three questions I want to answer today, the first question is, watch this, uh, or statement I should say would like to make is, it's all right to ask questions and have some doubts Amen. at the people that's proposing the answer. The second thing is, watch this, with Jesus, there's always a second chance. Sometimes a third and a fourth chance. And then the last statement I would like to answer and measure up is, your questions and doubts is nothing but God using your stumbling blocks to make them your stepping stones. Because see, the first question realistically arises out of verse 24, because when we begin to dissect the text, we'll find out Thomas, and we talked about Thomas being a twin, and we talked about the fact that why he's being called a twin is because there was somebody that looked it like him, act like him, sounded like him, but it really wasn't him, so they had to make sure that they were pacific and let you know that even though there was a bunch of Thomases around, <laughs> this is the Thomas we're talking about. Okay. That Thomas, watch this, was not with the disciples when Jesus showed up the first time. And when Thomas shows up on the scene, they didn't say hi. They didn't ask him how he was doing. They didn't ask him where he was at. The first thing that came out their mouth was, hey, we seen Jesus. And so we begin to label him based upon what has been said from the other disciples that here he is, he's doubting the fact that they see Jesus for themselves. And when I began to dissect the text, what I found out is, if you go over to the 11th chapter of John, around that 16th verse, G uh, Thomas is coming into a room with a bunch of people he just had to get together himself. Because in the 11th chapter, he begins, in the 16th verse, he begins to tell the disciples why they were acting all squeamish, why they were acting all scared, why they were acting like they didn't have nothing to do with Jesus, that he was the one who rallied the disciples together and said, hey, we ought to go out with him and die with him. Don't let him go out there by himself. Amen. It was Peter who said, watch this, I'll cut this joker ear off if he put his hands on my Lord and my Savior. Yeah, right. It was Peter that began to cuss people out and talk about the fact I'm your ride or die. Thomas was right by Peter's side trying to tell them, what is so weak? Come on, let's band together. You got two of his disciples. Out of the 12 disciples, the other 10 disciples were acting all scared and acting as if they didn't know what Jesus was talking about. But yet now Thomas comes into the room and the 10 scary jokers, the 10 that didn't want to be with him, is now telling him that Jesus showed up to them. And Thomas in his mind was saying, hold up, wait a minute, That's right. wait a minute, wait, whoa, hold on. You denied him, you ran from him, you act like you ain't know who he was. You mean to tell me Jesus gonna show up to y'all when y'all didn't really want to be bothered with him? And now you gonna tell me when I told him I was his ride or die, when I stood up for him when y'all wouldn't, that he came and talked to y'all first before he came and saw me? Oh, right. Y'all acting like y'all don't know what I'm talking about. Let me pull them a little bit closer to you and help you out a little bit. I've been here for 40 years. You mean to tell me you don't ask somebody who just walked through the door what well, this church is about? When I done put the pews in place, I painted the wall, I put flowers everywhere. I've been here since Jesus resurrected this joker. And now you don't ask them instead of asking me who you Oh, man. That here Thomas is really tripping. 
laughing at the fact you mean to tell me he going to come to y'all and not come to me? Oh, I think I need to pause for the calls one more time because now I'm starting to get excited. I really wasn't feeling that well. I'm going to have John for this morning. But now I'm getting excited all by myself because realistically, we that way too some days. Because we look at people and we want to point or give a question or an assignment based upon their activity instead of what God is really doing with them. I may not look saved all the time. I may act crazy all the time. I may look like I don't know who God is. I may have done some stuff I ain't had no business. I may have been in some places you've seen me. Matter of fact, if you hadn't been out here yesterday, you'd have been trying to figure out what Reverend doing coming out of the club. And I was coming out of the club, looking at the club, trying to figure out how we could use this man's kitchen to make sure the man's kitchen was all right. But if you seen me and didn't know that, you'd be tripping. Right, right. <laughs> because the reality is, is that we base people or look at people based upon how we feel they should be. So I don't all the time talk say, I don't all the time wear clothes that makes me look say. Sometimes I look like a hood rat walking into a grocery store. Sometimes I look like a thug that just been standing on the corner. Why? Because I want somebody to ask me, why do you live the way you live? Yes. I thought you were saying sanctified filled with the Holy Ghost. You mean to tell me my attire only makes me say? You mean to tell me the way I talk only makes me say? You mean to tell me unless I'm carrying the Bible, this is the only way you can see that I'm saved when my Lord and my Savior died for me at Calvary. He paid the price that I couldn't pay. He sanctified me when I was unsanctifiable. He made me righteous when I was uh, a tyrant. in 
inconsolable. That just because I ain't with you, don't mean I ain't walking with the Lord. Amen. Oh, man. I, I know you can't have it, but most of us really to believe that just because he don't do what I want him to do, well. evidently he ain't saved the way he keeps saying he's saved. Okay, let me, let, me, let me put it this way. Just because a person don't bring you flowers don't mean they don't love you. Yeah. But because you've been so conditioned that when a person brings you flowers, they love you, that your mind gets so caught up in the avenue of the flowers that you can't see. He took his money and did something else with it to show you that he loved you. He could have made the ring.
I said, well, what do you mean? She said, no, it's taken care of. Don't do that again. If we do that, if you do that again, we're gonna have some serious problems because I've had an account at this bank for that gone near 20 years. My name has never came up in this position. So please don't do that again. I drove, I said, cool. I'm arrogant. I am selfish. I am petty. I called the bank myself. I asked the man. The man said to me, look here, man, you got a comma that you done messed up so bad. That realistically, she took care of it, and she never said nothing. She held on to it for daggone near 16 years, no, I'm sorry, 12 years before she said anything, and I told it to a married couple. And she said, well, since you told it, now I'm going to tell it. And so she told her side of the story. My eyes got big. I was literally mm -mm. <laughs> stumbled for words just because you kept something that really you should have told me. But it gave me an opportunity to get my act together because she gave me a second chance to show her realistically what God showed me. It's because when you got somebody in your life, it ain't always about you. It's about everybody involved. What I love about the Lord is I need about five of y'all in here that can testify that God gave you a second chance and a third chance because he knew it wasn't about you.
That's why I can talk to the crackhead on the street. That's why I can talk to the wine man. That's why I can walk into a club. I don't care about where you at or what you doing or what's going on in your life. The Bible told me to be an example for those that are without one. So when I walk into a room, I don't care if you say you see me come out of the club.
you verse number 27, mm -hmm. 28, mm -hmm. when Jesus approaches Thomas and he says, Thomas, now can I put it in Ryan's terminology? <laughs> Paraphrasing it, watch this. He says, Thomas, play I heard you ain't gonna believe him until you see it for yourself. And what he does is, he covers every question that Thomas had, and he didn't do it sarcastically. He, didn't. he said, hey, I bet you said you ain't going to believe. Go on, check this out. Look at my hands. Go on, check this out. Put your hand in my side. Go on, check out the nail prints. Go on, do a full examination. Come on, man. Because I need for you. That when you leave here, right. I need for you to know without a shadow of a doubt right. that you're talking to me and you ain't talking to no ghost. Right. That's all right. That's why I said I got some questions. Right. Right. Because watch this. When Thomas did what Jesus told him to do, Thomas said, watch this unequivocally. <laughs> Thomas said, <laughs> My Lord and my God. Yeah. Oh, y'all don't know when to get back. Because he gives Jesus the accreditation that everybody else been trying to take from him. And that was, here he is, my Lord. My Lord means he's my king, he's my deliverer, he's my sanctifier, he's everything that I need. But he's also my God. Meaning that I don't need to go to y'all no more. God showed up. God in a way out of no way. God is the one. While we are dating our text, verse number 29, and I'm done. Thank you for your time. I appreciate it. He, he literally, Jesus said, okay, Thomas, because you believe. Yes, we see. You see me. Mm -hmm. You believe. Mm -hmm. I appreciate the fact that you believe in what you saw. Because you see seen Because you see me. There you go. You had an indication, and realistically, this is what's going to mess you up. <clears throat> Because when you really look at the text from the Greek, literally what he was saying to Thomas is because you touched me for yourself, yes, sir. you believe me. Amen. And because we didn't have the right definition for it, we put in the phrase, because you seen me. Right. And realistically, right, right. it ain't about the sight, it's about the touch. Yeah. You know it was a touch, the wonder when the issue of blood. That when she touched the hem of his garment, he drawed up the blood, and she was able to see. You know the touch is when the blind man touched Jesus, and his revelation of his eyesight came back. It's about a touch. That literally, he said, there will come a time where there's going to be some people that ain't going to be able to touch me, but yet still they going to believe. And I need about 20 of y'all, and I'll be 21, that no man testify, you ain't never touched this deal. But you believe them. You ain't never been touched by him. But you believe them. And when you believe in him, that's when he touched you. Go ahead, high five your neighbor. And tell your neighbor, I believe him because he touched me. I believe him because he held me. I believe him because I'm in the hollow of his hand. And he ain't nothing separate me from the love of his hand. That's what Paul says in Romans 8. Who shall separate me from the love of God? Shall trick Because your questions became your stepping stone out of your misery, out of your pain, out of your heartache, out of your burning, out of your tribulation, out of your circumstances, out of your financial crunch. You were nothing but God said, baby, I love you. Baby, I'm going to hold on to you. Baby, stand on up. Quit beating me down. Hold your hand up. You ain't got nothing to be ashamed of. When they say you were wrong, he will stand up and look at his daddy and say, I died for that. 